Hey everybody, we're continuing Terra's story of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix today. As you can see, because we've chosen Terra's story, now only he is on the title screen, because only he is important to this story, apparently. Anyhow, uh, so, we basically have the story. Terra failed his exam, because he used darkness. Maybe. Actually, technically he didn't, but there was darkness within him, and his mentor was like, No, nope, you're failing because of that. And then he's tasked with going around and defeating a bunch of these dark creatures that are not heartless. They are not heartless, they are their own unique thing. All the while, this creepy old guy is like, Ah, Terra, darkness is pretty cool, you should use it. And he's like, okay, even though I've literally learned my entire life that darkness is bad, I'll totally believe you. Because, for some reason, my mentor is good friends with you, even though you're pretty obviously evil. Yeah, basically, the, the long, uh, long story short, birth by sleep, every main character is an idiot, and you just gotta accept it. And... That's okay though, the gameplay can be fun. So today, we are going to the first real world of the game, the Enchanted Dominion, combat level one. All right, let's pay a visit. And this is where we're gonna start seeing that critical mode is actually pretty doggone tough. And this area looks familiar, doesn't it? Yep, we're going to the Sleeping Beauty world. A brand new original world we have not seen up to this point. Skadoosh. Here we go. Bro, why would you not keep wearing your armor? Surely that would protect you, right? It actually does nothing. Is that supposed to be a lake or just fog? I can't tell. Monsters. The ones the master mentioned. These are the unburst. Yeah, they are. Defeat all of the unversed. So, they look like Heartless, but they're not. Instead of Shadows, these guys, I believe, are called Floods. And we can just wreck them with our physical combos, no real problem. And we can use our commands as well. But actually, what I want to do is show off the D-Links. So, we forged D-Links with both Ventus and Aqua last time. So, if we press right on the D-pad, we can go to the D-Links, and we're going to choose to D-Link Ventus, and you're going to see what happens. So here we go. And as a result, our command deck has now changed, so we have Ventus's commands, like Quick Blitz, Strike Raid, and Arrow. Ventus is mainly a wind-based guy, so we get stuff like that. We also get a different finish command, as you're going to see. It's more of a flurry of attacks, rather than a big honkin' one like Terra normally has. And as you can see, our D-Link gauge is continuously depleting. We can refill it if we pick up D-Link points, which are these blue things. And I want to defeat a bunch of enemies with uh, in the Ventus D-Link if I can. Oh boy, here's a big boy. Thankfully, we can hit him in the front, unlike the fat Heartless. Now we're taking a lot of damage, oh boy. Yeah, my goal is I want to defeat as many Unversed as I can in, while D-Linking Ventus. Because there's a chance when you defeat enemies while D-Linking someone, you can get these level up flowers for the D-Link. And trust me, there's one piece of advice I can give you for Terra Story, it's level up the Ventus D-Link as soon as possible. Because doggone it, it is really good. There we go, there's that first flower. Levels up and we get the haste ability. Look how fast we can attack now. Now anytime we D-Link Ventus, we will be able to attack a lot faster. Make sure you block attacks, especially if you're playing critical mode. Yeah, look at how fast the attack is. Good lord. And as a result, our damage output is just insane. All of that from one level up flower. And we can level up the D-Link one more time. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> Definitely give get the Ventus D-Link level up as soon as possible. You're gonna need it on critical mode. Oh no, I don't have any ranged attacks. At all. And now, we uh, apparently were forcibly uh, closed out of the Ventus D-Link. And we don't have as much... We don't have a full D-Link gauge anymore. Oh, we can open up some treasure chests. Oh boy, a potion. We will be needing that because we don't have cure yet. I do love the music in this world, though. It's really good. Another treasure chest back here. Pulsing Crystal. So that's a synthesis material that we are going to want. In the synthesis materials, there are only crystals. No stone shards, gems, or anything like that. It's just crystals. It's pretty simplified. At least as far as the materials go. And uh, 
Now is no time to explore. That probably leads towards Maleficent's area, if I would have to wager a guess. No, we can't go over there. I think I mentioned last time, but uh, all of the free main characters go to each world, but they can explore different parts of each world. So Terra's not going to explore Maleficent's area. He's going to explore this forest area, as well as King Stefan's castle. Thank you, Sliding Dash. We get O-Blizzard. That's going to be nice to have. So if we go to our command decks, Sliding Dash has reached its maximum level, so its zero EXP ability is now yours to keep. Auto abilities stay active even if you don't have them installed in your deck. Quick Blitz has reached the maximum level, so its scan ability is now yours to keep. Auto abilities stay active, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we go here, we have our free abilities, Sliding Dash, Quick Blitz, and Stun Edge. Sliding Dash and Quick Blitz are both max level. If you play on critical mode, both of these will be max level. Otherwise, only Quick Blitz will be max level, I believe. Quick Blitz comes with the scan ability, which lets you see enemy HP. And then for critical mode, you get the zero EXP ability attached to this Sliding Dash. And that will uh, allow you to play without getting any experience points, which I do not recommend you do if this is your first time playing. And Stun Edge, as you can see, is still level 1, and we need to increase its level. You can increase a... Uh, you can give experience points to your commands by just defeating enemies, and stronger enemies will give you more uh, command points or CP to level it up. We are going to add Blizzard, which is a magic spell at uh, the lowest level. Terra's magic spells are pretty terrible, but we still want to level up our commands for melding later on. More on that later. And we also want to equip potions so we can actually heal ourselves. We also have action commands, which for right now we only have jump, block, and slide. Jump doesn't have a level, it's just regular. And then block and slide are both at the lowest possible level. Again, those level up as we defeat enemies. And our shot lock command is Sonic Shadow, which is our only one. It is also at level 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Melding commands allows you to combine two commands to create a new one. So as you level up commands, you will be able to meld them together, create new, more powerful commands, and you can attach synthesis crystals to them in order to give the, the new command that you meld uh, equipping that will give you a new ability, basically. So that's how you get the abilities in this game. Not through leveling up, but through melding commands. Which is kind of cool, but also kind of frustrating. I strongly recommend using a guide for melding because it can be a little bit complicated. More on that later. We have a list of all the commands. We can choose our deck. And there are also finish commands here. So, we've looked at this for a bit. Evolving your finish command. Meet certain requirements to power up your finish command. Your finish command may power up in different ways depending on which conditions you fulfill. Use the finish command screen to change your command or give commands new names. So, this is something I didn't know you could do, but apparently you can actually rename all of your finish commands in this. And I'm actually going to try that out, so... If you press square, change the finish command back to its original name? Uh, no. Oh, we can't. We can rename Finish. Oh, sweet. Oh, that's actually really cool. How did I not know this? The game literally tells you you can do this. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to be renaming these Finish commands as we go. Uh, I won't reveal them right away, but I think for this first one. So the first Terra Finish command, he just kind of like... He does like a couple of swings, then a big swing to the ground. So... <laughs> hmm... <laughs> I've renamed the first finish command Terra Smash. <laughs> oh man, this is my new favorite fiend in Birth by Sleep. How did I not know this? Yeah, so as you can see from here, this is the only level 1 command. And basically, if we have this equipped, we can get any of these next level 2 commands by fulfilling certain criteria. This red one, you need to enter a certain command style a bunch of times, and we don't even have that command style. This uh, red one, I believe, we need to get a certain amount of command points. And then this yellow one, we need to collect a certain amount of money. So, if we encounter any of... The, if we fulfill any of these criteria, we will unlock it and then switch our finish command over to this one. You can only have one finish command equipped at a time, though. And if you want to unlock the others, you'll have to go back to the uh, lower level one in order to fulfill the criteria. More on that, again, later. Birth by Sleep has so many complicated stuff going on that... Uh, I don't want to overwhelm you all at once, so we'll just kind of try to go over it as we go. The Ventus Command, as you can see, it is level 2 now. And instead of just having Quick Blitz, Strike Rate, and Arrow, we now have Quick Blitz, Strike Rate, Arrow, and Sliding Dash. The Battle Commands will increase as you level it up. So you have the Base Level, Level 1, and Level 2. Or you have Base Level, Level 2, and Level 3. Right now this is Level 2, and we have the Haste Ability, which is only active 
when we are dealing this. If we give it an additional level up, one of our flower, we get a second ability that activates during the Ventus D-Link, and are we get more battle commands, and the other ones might change up a bit, and we will get a new finish command for the D-Link, so keep that in mind. However, you cannot D-Link somebody unless your D-Link gauge is completely filled. And save points do not fill your uh, command, your link point gauge, so... Rats, that's a bit of a problem. And that's a balloon sticker. Each world will have a certain, uh, couple of stickers to collect, and you can put them in your sticker album to unlock stuff. It sounds weird, but you do want to go out of your way to do it, because it does give you some special stuff. Nice good job, Terra. That's a nice castle. Welcome to the Enchanted Dominion, which is a very weird name for the Sleeping Beauty world, but all right. Oh, hey, it's Maleficent. Let's make a new friend. Hey, girl. What's this? Why aren't you asleep, boy? That fool Slora cast a spell to put everyone in this castle into a deep, deep slumber. Who are you? Why, I am Maleficent. You seem as nice. As all who dwell in this kingdom would know. Now you must reciprocate the introduction. Who are you? That's I'm fair. Terra. What do you know about those monsters? The ones who attacked me? Hmm. Now why would I give a thought to creatures so base, so inconsequential? <laughs> well, they are base, that's for sure. Anyway, I'm looking for someone. Ever heard of a man named Xehanort? Oh yeah, he's my pen pal! <laughs> that name is not familiar to me. Is he an outsider like yourself? Oh, but wait. I do remember someone leaving the castle. Tell me, what was he doing there? She didn't say it was I him. Say. I can only be certain he was not from this kingdom. If you're curious, go see the castle for yourself. Uninvited? There, the entrance is past the bridge. Thanks. <laughs> Perhaps he did speak about imprisoning the light. The light could be so many things. Could he have meant Princess Aurora? Aurora. So this introduces kind of the running theme of Terra's story. Terra goes to a Disney World, meets the villain, trusts them, and then, well, I think you can imagine what happens. Now, in Terra's defense, he oftentimes doesn't have reason not to trust the villains. He doesn't know that they're villains. And in that interaction, Maleficent didn't really give away that she was a villain other than just the way she looks, and Terra probably was uh, taught don't judge people by their appearances. Point uh, pointing, <laughs> for example, the residents of Halloween Town all look scary, but they are all very nice, so I don't really blame Terra for this one. But anyhow. Oh, hey! More unversed! Whoop! Jump! That command gauge is filling. Terra Smash! <laughs> Oh man, I love that finish command. Alright, I'll also try to show off command style. So if we use a bunch of these things like Stun Edge, stuff like that. Yeah, instead of the finish command, we now are in Critical Impact. And as you can see, our combos are now going to change a bit now that we're in this command style. Our combos are now powered up and slightly different. And if we can build up the command gauge again, we get a special finish command. Critical Impact! Boom! So the command styles are very interesting. Oh, wow, dead. Yeah, welcome to critical mode. Let's continue. But now, anytime you die, the D-Link gauge fills up again, which is pretty nice. So I think at this point, let's D-Link Aqua and I can show off what she's like. So Aqua's D-Link will give us a bunch of magic spells like Blizzara, and most, most importantly, she gives us Cura. Basically, if you want to heal early on, you kind of have to D-Link Aqua. And that's Aqua's finish command. She basically summons a uh, massive magic. Heal. 
Yikes! I don't know how this could be. I was guarding. <laughs> wow. Man, critical mode is definitely tougher than I remember. I still want to level up the Aqua D-Link, though. Early on in the in the game in critical mode, you should probably focus on leveling up your D-Links. Because they are probably your most powerful and important tools to have in, in the early game. Later on, D-Links... I'm not going to say they become useless, but D-Links get a lot worse as the game goes on, and as you get just more innately powerful commands. Thunder. Freeze. There we go. Man, Aqua's finisher is really powerful, though. Good job. These guys are annoying. As you saw last time, they can rack up a lot of damage in a short amount of time. There we go. Flower for Aqua. We get Magic Deflector, so any magic spells that get fired at us will generally get reflected back at the enemies who casted it. Also, once you level up a D-Link, I don't think you're going to be able to find another flower unless you cancel the D-Link and then D-Link again. So that's why I canceled the Aqua D-Link. This way, I can get more D-Link points, get my meter back to the max, and then, as I encounter more enemies, Terra Smash, we can D-Link uh, Ventus again. Because again, the Ventus D-Link is generally your best friend in the early game, just due to that haste ability. Uh-oh. Also, Shot Locks. Can't forget about Shot Locks. They're so good. So my main problem with Birth by Sleep is just the generic combos are so boring because the game wants you to use the command styles or D-Links to change your combos up a bit, as well as using the command deck. Which, command deck is interesting, but especially in the early game when you only have dumb commands, it's not that great. That's my main issue. Also, when you lose focus, pretty much the only way of getting it back is by touching save points. So... Keep that in mind, you can't just spam shot locks. At, le at least not yet. Alright. This room is the entrance to the castle. There's going to be a lot of enemies in this room. Alright, let's, let's see how quickly we can level up the D-Link again. There are a lot of enemies in this room, and most enemies drop D-Link points for you, so... Hopefully we can find it without too much is uh, issue. Again, Weber enemies drop the... Uh, there we go, beautiful. Here we go, max level Ventus D-Link. We now have haste and auto counter. Basically, if we block attacks, it can sometimes automatically counter for us. That kind of sucks. But here's the new finish command, where we just fly around and hit things. Um... I have mixed feelings about if this if you can actually hit stuff with it, then it's really great. The problem is it oftentimes just whiffs completely. But now we get some interesting new commands. We have uh, Blitz for one. Hey enemies, I want to use Blitz on you. Here we go. You may remember Blitz from uh, Chain of Memories. You know that game that's really good that nobody actually likes. Ooh, a treasure chest for me? Of course, Piglet. If you're really good at pressing the buttons, you can do a lot of damage with that ability. The problem is if you're too late with, jump with pushing the buttons, you'll be too high up in the air to actually hit anything. So I'm not a huge fan of that particular finish command. Alright, there we go. We leveled up our Blizzard command to level 2, which means we can meld it. Generally, you need to get a command either to max level or almost max level in order to start melding it. And Blizzard can only get up to level 3, so once it's at level 2, you can easily meld it. Keep in mind, though, if a command has an ability attached to it, you need to get that command to max level in order to keep the ability. Otherwise, you only get to use the ability when you have that command equipped. Did we already kill all the enemies in this room? I thought there was more than that. Ooh, zero gravity. Collecting crown stickers. Collect the crown stickers throughout each world, then you can arrange them in your sticker album and your reports to rack up points. With enough points, you'll receive items. Cool. 
how about, uh, let's see. Terra hates Blizzard. Let's use zero gravity instead. Creates an anti-gravity field and sends foes around you drifting into the air for continual damage, and you can hit floating enemies to confuse them. Zero gravity? Actually pretty good in this game. It basically will stun a lot of enemies, and you can hit them and rack up a good amount of damage. It's quite nice. Pretty much useless against bosses, but against common enemies, it's actually pretty great. Nobody in this castle. I guess I get that they're all sleeping, but still. Yeah, Drift is especially good against these guys. As you can see, our combos are dealing more damage because they were in uh, zero gravity. Terra Smash! Alright, let's see if we can get Aqua to a max level D-Link as well. Unfortunately, the Floods, much like the Shadow Heartless, are very annoying because they can just hide in the ground. Here we go. This room definitely doesn't have as many enemies as the main ca castle entrance does, but there's still a decent amount to get some, uh, to get some, yeah, D-Link experience. Beautiful. Here's uh, max level Aqua D-Link. Here we get magic deflector and auto life. So if we die while D-Linking Aqua, we will get revived, but only one time for D-Link. And now we also get even more magic spells, like, uh, fire. fire! What else? Mind Square. Mind Square is a really, really good command. Wanna know what it does? It basically surrounds you with mines, and these mines will wait for an enemy to touch them, and it will blow the enemies up, and they take a lot of damage, and it's great. Alright, thank you, Aqua. That's very, very much appreciated. So if I go to reports, you can see how many treasures you have here. Okay, we're missing free treasure chests, and I think they're all in the next room. As I said before, um, the worlds in this game are very tiny, so there's gener they generally don't take too long to complete. This this room looks suspicious. Let's examine the dark room. I love darkness. Thanks, Tara. Break into the person's room. Hey, girl. It's Aurora. This feels so familiar. Her heart is filled with light. Not the slightest touch of darkness. Just the kind of heart I need. That's not ominous or anything. For what? <laughs> Imagine with me the most glorious of futures. Seven of the purest hearts, each overflowing with light. When brought together, they grant the power to rule all worlds. What do you mean? Why, that key you hold. The Keyblade, is it called? Where did you learn that name? That trinket is the only way to obtain the hearts. No more games! Where is Master Xehanort? Impudence will get you nowhere, child. If you wish to learn more, you must retrieve the heart of Aurora. Really? And why would I ever want to do that? It's not a matter of why, but of will. In your heart, there is darkness just waiting to be awakened. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Perhaps not yet. But I have power over sleep. And I can awaken what's inside you. Then you will be free to be who you truly are. Remember, the darkness lurks in every heart. Darkness is our foe. Would that we could be rid of it. You must destroy it. Push the darkness down. Give it no quarter in your heart. Seems like sound advice. Uh-oh.
Terra goes to the first world, immediately takes a girl's heart out. <laughs> Not of his own volition, though. Just what I've waited for. To think that all he spoke of was and will be true. What? How did I... What did I do? What did you do? You speak as if I pulled some invisible strings. No, you couldn't be further from the truth, child. I simply whispered to the darkness you already held inside. How could I do this? Oh, you sound so upset. Finn! Yes, now you want to know where Xehanort went. Well, that I cannot answer. Thanks, sucker. He disappeared into the darkness. <laughs> but now I know <gasps> well, that sounds like it is necessary to gather hearts. Join me. Collect six more hearts of pure light. Then we will rule all the world together! Okay, I believe you. You seem to be mixed up. I'm a peacekeeper, not a tyrant. Hmm. For a peacekeeper, you're off to an exceptionally poor star. A savage but true. Remember this. The darkness in your heart cannot be held back by force or strength. Now, my work here is done, as is yours. Wasn't there someone you needed to chase? Wait! Should have done a faster attack than Terra Smash. Sorry, Terra. The Unburst. They're gonna bring down the castle. I have to do something. Maybe don't take out a girl's heart next time. I know Terra didn't do that on purpose, but oh yeah, forged a D Link with Maleficent. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Terra Terra performed such a deep bond with Maleficent that he actually can dimensionally link with her now. That's that's an interesting one for sure. Oh, sorry, Aurora. I didn't want to do that. The darkness took over and I, I couldn't control myself. In this big old chest we get a map. A map to help you navigate the Enchanted Dominion. Gee, that would have been nice to, nicer to have if we weren't at the very end of the world. Yeah, I'm not joking. We are, we're literally at the end of the world. We just have the boss fight left. Ooh, we open this, we get, ooh, the sleep spell. That's very fitting for the Sleeping Beauty world. And then, big chest number two, boom. Here we get the attack recipe, a recipe list that reveals what you will create if your melding combination will result in a basic attack command. So this is one of the few ways you can actually use the uh, melding guide to your advantage. And speaking of which, I think I want to try out the uh, melding a little bit. So here we go. So look, looking at what we have, we've got max level sliding dash, max level quick blitz. Our stun edge is not max level, but nor is our zero gravity. Let's see what we can work with. So let's start by melding. I uh, skipped that explanation. Whoops. That's okay. We can actually, I believe, pull it up here. Game records. Not hit counts. No, that's that's something different. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Game help. Uh, command deck, melding commands. Yeah, we forgot about this one. You can create a new command by melding to existing ones. The commands you meld must have a high enough level first. Use a synthesis item while melding to add an ability to the command. Cool. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to skip through it. Yeah, so let's go to the meld commands area. So we can take two commands and then potentially attach an item to them. So, out of the ones we have... We can meld Quick Blitz, Sliding Dash, or Blizzard. Stun Edge, Zero Gravity, and Sleep are not high enough level to meld yet. So, right now, if we try to meld, say, Quick Blitz and Blizzard together, it'll sh it shows us what will happen. Normally, if we tried to do this before we got the attack recipe, we wouldn't get to see what new command would be created. It would just say question mark. But now that we have the attack command, provided that the command is a basic enough attack command, we'll be able to see what it is. Likewise, we can also meld Sliding Dash with Blizzard to also get Blizzard Edge. 
Or we can melt Sliding Dash with Quick Blitz to get Strike Raid. Now, out of all of these, I want to keep my Sliding Dash, so I think I'm going to meld Blizzard with Quick Blitz to get a Blizzard Edge. And then here are the Crystals. The Pulsing Crystal, used when melding commands, it attaches various abilities, some, for example, which increase the damage you deal with certain types of attacks, and then the Hungry Crystal, used when melding commands. It attaches abilities which increase HP prize drops or help you scoop prizes up. Now, this is where the command melding gets complicated. Obviously, pretty much every command can be melded with a different command, and that can create a whole bunch of different combinations, but the actual abilities you get from the crystals are really, really complicated, and I cannot possibly explain how intricate it is. Basically, you can pull up a uh, guide, and it'll show you how complicated it is. But basically, right now, if we mix... Uh, let's see, so this makes Blizzard Edge. So let me look this up here in the list of commands. So we're trying to make Blizzard Edge by melding Blizzard with Quick Blitz. So this is a, a Type G. Type G, if we use the Pulsing Crystal on it, then we will get Leaf Bracer, which is a pretty nice ability. And if we use the Hungry Crystal, we get HP Prize Plus. Now, out of those two, uh, Leaf Bracer will be much better in the long term. So here we go. One or both of these commands is already installed in a deck. Meld the commands anyways. Yes. And here we go. We get Blizzard Edge with Leaf Bracer. And I, again, I used a guide to figure that out. We can't meld anything else, but that gives you an idea of how command melding works. So now we equip Blizzard Edge, which gives us Leaf Bracer. Doesn't do anything right now, because we don't have Cure. But if we D-Link Aqua, or once we get Cure, that will basically mean we won't be able to take damage from enemy attacks while we are casting Cure, which is incredibly valuable. You absolutely will want that. And also, we're going to go with Sleep, at least for the time being, so we can start leveling that bad boy up. Alright, good job, Terra. Oh, there's also a shop here. So we can buy a bunch of commands. We have 200 bucks. We have Quick Blitz, Sliding Dash, Blizzard Edge. So Blizzard Edge would normally not be for sale in the shop, but because we've melded it, it now is, but it costs more, more money. Uh, yeah. And that's pretty much the size of it. We could get another Zero Gravity. We could get another Blizzard. I'm not going to buy anything just yet. But one other thing we can do... If we go to the world map here, we can try out that Fortune Street style of, uh, board game. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, if we press start here, we can open the menu and go to command board. It allows us to play on the command board. We can also do this, I think, from any save point. So actually, if we go back here and go to Aurora's Chamber, Terra was struck by this world's beauty at once, but the lush landscapes were forgotten once his enemy, the Unversed, showed up. Yeah, if you press start while on a save point in particular. So here, we're not on a save point. We can't use command board. We're on a save point. We can go to command board. Let's go to command board. This, this is really weird, but actually very valuable. The command board. Welcome to the command board. On the command board, you roll dice, move along the panels, and try to rack up GP, game points. To win, be the first back to start with enough for the GP goal. Select new game and choose a game board and the GP goal. So check instructions if you need help. Basically, all you need to know, it's Fortune Street, but with Kingdom Hearts. And without the stocks, so it's not as good. Let's start a new game. We only have one board, the Keyblade board. Our GP goal is 5,000. The thrills are never more than a roll away on this compact board. The Land of Departure. Yes, 5,000 uh, GP uh, goal. Let's play. I'm going to explain to you why this, uh, why this is actually really good. Land of Departure. So, we got three players. Myself, Ventus, and Aqua. Shuffle the play in order. Uh, we're not going to shuffle. I want to go first. Controls. When it's your turn, choose what you want to do. Just uh, check the bottom right to see how you all are doing. Adjusting the camera, you can press triangle to toggle the panel view, which lets you move the cursor around the board, and you can hold triangle to move faster. L1 and R1 rotate the camera, and then square switches to an overhead view of the board. You can press X to toggle the panel info window. Char uh, you can start by choosing roll to roll the die. You will move forward the number of spaces you roll. When you hit a fork in the road, you can use the D-pad and press X to choose a new direction. All right. Here we go. We can also use our hand, uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. Let's just keep it simple. We rolled a six. Which means, if we look, we can see where we're gonna land. So we can land over here on the cube. If we go up, we will still be on the cube. And if we go down here, we can lay a panel down. Also, there are these star panels here. These are bonus panels. If we buy them, that will actually give us brand new commands that we can take outside the game. Which is really, really good. I think I'm going to start by moving... 
Another thing you want to do is you want to hit these checkpoints. Because when you hit all the checkpoints and then go back to the bank, basically you will get a payday. I'm going to go down. All right. And we get 300 GP. Checkpoints up in the start panel. Pass through a checkpoint to earn bonus GP and collect one command card. The ones you've been through are marked, and you can check your nameplate to find out which checkpoints you've passed. Pass for all four checkpoints and then pass the start panel to collect a bonus GP and restock your command cards. The bonus changes as you complete laps and acquire more panels. So you want to do this. The tech commands you own serve as your game pieces. Symbols are assigned based on the command types. Land on an empty panel and you can pay GP to place a command there. Whenever opponents land on a panel, they must pay a toll. Commands you placed on the board are powered up at the end of the game, based on their value and your final rank. Each player has a GP wallet and wealth. The GP wallet is basically your spending money. Wealth is your GP wallet plus panels you own. For you to win, your wealth must equal or exceed the GP goal. Alright, yes, we want to place a command panel here. We can place Block, Stun Edge, Zero Gravity, Slide, or Sonic Shadow. I am going to place Sonic Shadow because I want to level up my Shot Lock commands as soon as possible. There we go. Command panel acquired. Alright, let's see what Ventus does. He rolls the die. He gets a 1. So he goes up. I'm actually quite happy with that. We'll see why yes. later on. Aqua is going next. She rolls the die. She rolls a 3. Alright. She gets that first checkpoint and lands on this cube. Alright. So this cube, you can see the counter under it. Sick. It says 6. Once this cube is moved 6 times, it will disappear and whoever moved it the final time will get a GP bonus. Also, uh, as you basically as she moves to the left, the cube will go with her and roll until it reaches the end of these like empty voids. If you land in the void, you actually have to pay 100 GP. So, yeah. Basically, she's going to roll it to this side, but that'll only take out three. I can go to this area in the start and then move it to the rest of the uh, way. All right, we're moving this way. No matter which way we go, we will be landing on the same square. So I'm going to move down, because if I move down, it means I have a chance to land on those two bonus panels up there next turn. And I want to get those bonus panels. And we get another command card. I landed. Yes, I would like to pay. Uh, let's see. Out of these, let's put down zero gravity. There we go. Command panel level acquired. I want to level up zero gravity if at all possible. Ventus rolls a two, so he's also going on the cube. And now you're going to see what happens. So Aqua's going to roll, and this is going to put Ventus in a bad position. She rolls the cube, Ventus falls down and immediately has to pay the 100. And then she just rolls the, uh, the cube over there. She's placing nice. the blizzard panel down. Hopefully I don't land on that. One other thing I'm going to do now. Options, uh, walking speed is going to go to fast. Message speed will go to fast as well. This will just make the game go by a little bit faster. Five. I am actually going to go down, because if you go, if you land on this special sparkly square, something happens. Keyblade Glider, move to any panel. This is very, a uh, very powerful ability, if I do say so myself. Which means I can choose to land on a bonus panel and get a prize. Select a panel that will move to. So that's a bonus panel that gives us the Magnet Command. Magnet is insanely good in this game. This one would give us Strike Raid. This one gives us arrow, this one gives us slow. What about the one up here? It's a magnet, and then this gives us Ragnarok. I want this one. Ragnarok is a shot lock command, and you can only get it through the command board by buying it from a bonus panel. So yes, please. Ragnarok right away. Some commands are placed on the board from the get-go. Land on one of these bonus panels, and you can acquire a new deck command, so long as you pay the GP. This is going to put me at almost zero GP left, right. but it's worth it. Even if I lose, I still get to keep Ragnarok. Alright, and here comes Ventus. He landed on a bonus panel as well. So he got the Magnet command. But again, these are just computer players, so them getting bonus commands doesn't do anything. So Aqua lands on the Keyblade Glider. I would be surprised if she didn't just land on the green checkpoint right next to her. Yeah. If the AI lands on the Keyblade Glider, they, like, nine times out of ten will just choose to land on a checkpoint. Oh, and now she can level up her panel here. Nice. So now it's level 2, that means, uh, well, basically if you invest more money into your commands, it'll make the commands level up more, and it increases the toll road. 
All right, at this point, I'm going to show off what the hand does. What's a hand? You can play hands using different command card combinations. Hands yield various results. With the right cards, you could even turn the tables on your opponents. So there are a couple of different things we can do. Stun requires one attack command, and this forces an opponent out of choosing to sit. <laughs> Basically, it causes an opponent of our choice to lose a turn. And we can use a magic command to roll two dice instead of one. We can use a bonus command, like block, uh, slide, or whatever, to... Uh, use a GP protector, which means we don't have to pay GP this turn. We can confuse somebody with two of these. For free turns, all opponents will proceed in random directions when they reach intersection. That can be insanely powerful. We can also use a, an attack, a magic, and another command for GP magnet. We obtain 150 GP times the total number of panels uh, that my opponents own. Out of these, I'm just going to go simple. We're going to go two dice. Because I want a higher chance of escaping from this area. Because I am running low on the GP. All right, great. So we're gonna go this way, we're gonna move up here, and then here is why I was excited that they moved the cube for me. Prize cubes and damage panels. Land on a damage panel, and some of your GP will be absorbed into the prize cube. Ride the prize cube to avoid taking damage. Uh, ride the prize cube, the number of spaces shown in the star to earn bonus GP, as well as the GP absorbed from players. I didn't know about the absorbed players one. So Ventus having to pay money when he landed in the void means I will get that money for completing the uh, cube here. There we go. So normally I would get 400, but because Ventus landed on the void once, I actually get 500. And here we go, landed on a checkpoint. And we get another command card. Leveling up command panels. You can spend GP to raise a panel's level. This increases the to this increases the toll and affects how much the command will power up. You can select any panel if you land on the start panel or checkpoint, or you can level up a panel you own if you happen to land on it. Let's see. I don't want to spend too much money because I only have 950, but I do... Let's see. I can level up Ragnarok. How much would it be to level up Ragnarok? 400? That's a bit steep. What if I can level up Sonic Shadow? Oh, yeah. That only costs 110. Yes, please. There we go. Plus, they both have to go that way if they want the yellow checkpoint. All of a sudden, we're playing Fortune Street, y'all. All right, Ventus lands on the checkpoint as well. And again, it's just if you land on the checkpoint. Which, If you land on a checkpoint or if you land on one of your own commands, then that will allow you to... Uh, that is what allows you to level up your existing panels. Otherwise, you cannot. It's three. Ooh, only 50G? Yes, please. Um, let's put down Blizzard Edge. I want to get that leveled up for that Leaf Bracer. So yeah, this is a really weird minigame, but it's actually kind of fun. Oh, yay! Ventus had to pay me more money. Ventus is not doing so hot. As you can see, Ventus is in last place. His wealth is only 1,300, whereas my wealth is 2,500. A lot of that is just because I wrote the prize cube. Man, Aqua's taking over all the bonus panels. That's okay, I got the one bonus panel I wanted. Although getting Magnet would have been awesome as well. But beggars can't be choosers. I don't know if that's nice, Ventus. Uh, do you own it? You own like two pieces of property, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Ventus. Thank you for insulting me. Aqua gets another bonus panel. Nice. <laughs> that's okay. Five. We're gonna move down so we can ride the prize cube. Makes it a little bit safer. Although, if Aqua gets a good enough roll, she can make us pay money by falling into the void. That's okay. We got money. Also, if you land on a panel, you can pay enough uh, money to basically take the panel from them. So, technically... Oh, sorry, Aqua. Them's the brakes. So, if I were to land on one of Aqua or Ventus's spots, I could potentially buy that command, and I would get to keep that command as well. Oh, that's not good. There we go. Now I lose money too. No. No. Uh oh. GP boost. If you land on that, you you will get a GP boost. And anytime you, someone passes it, it increases the GP boost that they get. That's the way. 
All right, because I'm about to go back to the bank, and when you get back to the bank, it uh, refills all of your cards, I am going to use Confuse. Because this is insanely busted, and it will make the AI behave incredibly stupidly for the next three turns. All right, let's go to the left. All right! All right! There we go, we had our payday. We now got 12,000 GP and we get a bunch more cards. Uh, I don't want to pay Aqua money, so I'm going to move up and hit the there checkpoint. Uh, yes, I will level up a panel. Yes, I will. How about we level up Sonic Shadow by putting 1,500 GP into it? All right. Oh, and actually, I'm very close to getting the GP amount. The games in this last way less time than the Fortune Street games do, so... Ah. It's not gonna take, like, two hours to complete this. It's gonna take, like, maybe 20 minutes. Tops. Still a lot of time for a minigame, but... Trust me, with the amount of stuff you can get from this game and leveling stuff up... Especially early on when leveling up your commands takes a long time... It's actually a really good idea to do this minigame. And I'm not saying this just because I like Kingdom Hearts minigames. 100 Acre Wood is good, and I will defend this. Well, thus far, the Confuse ain't doing a whole lot. Oh, no. Five! Oh, yes! Keyblade Glider! Select a panel to move to. Let's see. Are there any other bonus panels, or has Aqua eaten them all? Aqua ate them all. Great. Um. Well, gee, in that case, I think I'll just move to the green checkpoint. Because this gives me a checkpoint, and this means I can invest in my, uh, or I can level up one of my commands. I think we will level up Ragnarok a Yes, we will level up Ragnarok a little bit. Right. Again, just placing your command panel down will level it up at the end, but the more money you invest, the uh, more you get. You are no longer confused. We'll see if Aqua will be confused. Nice. If Aqua moves up, that means she... Yep, okay, Aqua moved up. That means she did... <laughs> She definitely would not have done that if she was not confused. Okay, if we just get back to the bank, then we uh, win. Oh, hey! We could go on the Keyblade Glider and move back to the bank and we win! <laughs> Every single course basically has a different event for this sparkly square, and on this board, it's move to any square you want, which is kind of busted. Here we go! <laughs> That's game. <laughs> Tara wins. There we go. Winner! So yeah, it's kind of dumb, but it's also kind of fun. Easy. Easy. We get a new command, Ragnarok. Blizzard Edge got a little bit. Zero Gravity got a little bit. Ragnarok did not get a level, but Sonic Shadow did. And leveling up your shot locks is a great idea, because the higher level they are, the better they are. I mean, the higher level your commands are, the better they are. But it's a lot more noticeable with your shot locks, I'll just say that. And hey, we got full uh, D-Link again. Well, ain't that hunky-dory. All right, at this point, we are facing off against the boss, so sleep will be useless against it. We want sliding dash instead. Zero gravity is also kind of useless against it, but we don't have anything re better, really. So, that, yeah, that's just what we're going to be doing. All right. We're going to ignore these. Actually, no, we're not. We'll fight the enemies. We want to make sure we have a full D-Link gauge when we fight the boss, because you do not get any Link points during boss fights. Which means, if you don't go in with a full D-Link gauge, you don't get to use D-Links against bosses. And on critical mode, we kind of need D-Links against bosses. Turbo Smash! Back to the actual gameplay that you want to see. I will be playing the command boards, just because command board, there are several commands that you can't get outside of it, mainly shot locks. I could equip the Ragnarok shot lock, but there's not any point. I want to keep leveling up Sonic Shadow, which is just a better shot lock in general. And it's a higher level anyway, so it'll be more handy against the boss coming up. 
I'd also like to go into the boss fight with full HP, but... It's amazing that something as simple as sliding dash is like a special command we have to equip. Uh-oh. No! How dare you. Well, so much for the potion. Good lord. Alright, well, if we're fighting the enemies in the room, we may as well keep sleep on instead. Because sleep is actually pretty good. Especially against the fat guys. Fat guys can we can hit from the front, but they're still dangerous. Yeah, when they're asleep, they literally can't do anything for a while. Oh, wow, Blizzard Edge is insane if you can get a good hit off of them. There are several commands that I just don't really use all that much. Alright, Critical Impact! Goodbye. Boom! Oh, man, Critical Impact feels so good. If you thought Terra Smash was good. You ain't seen nothing yet. Man, Zero Gravity's really good too, though. Yes. Oh yeah. See how good Zero Gravity is? Gravity is either like one of the best things in Kingdom Hearts or one of the worst things in Kingdom Hearts. It's really bad in Chain of Memories, but it's really good in like most other games. Oh sweet. And here we go. Alright. Re-equip sliding dash, because that actually will be useful against the boss, and that'll be that should be good. Alright. Boss time! Go back to the main hall. The audience chamber, I'm sorry. Take out the Unversed! It's the first main boss of the game, the Wheel Master. It's like a giant Unversed spinning wheel, because that's what pricked Aurora's finger. And for this fight, you want to go Ventus D-Link. That's all I'll say. Look at that health bar. We're gonna need Ventus's D-Link in order to, uh... I'm just gonna mash all the buttons. <laughs> There's no penalty for getting the wrong button. With Ventus D-Link, this fight gets a lot more manageable. Also, this guy is so big that he, uh, the air dive finish command is really good against him. Okay. Oh, sweet! The Ventus D-Link, if it's at max level, gives you Cure. I forgot about that, actually. Ouch! That's not nice. Ouch. Wheelmaster does go crazy sometimes. Oh, boy, he dropped health for me, though. Goodbye, Wheelmaster. Yes! That's why I said level up your Ventus D-Link, because that is the way to beat the boss. Our deck capacity increased, so we can equip an additional command, and we learned the Diamond Dust command style. Different from Critical Impact. That's why I told her light was stolen. It was because I was weak. I'm sorry. I'll get your light back. Once I learn to stand up against the darkness... Well, seeing as how she's still missing her heart in Kingdom Hearts 1, I don't think you'll do that. The purest hearts of light. Do they hold the answer? How did you not pick up that Xehanort was evil? He disappeared into darkness! He Seven told Maleficent about hearts, her heart. Each completely void of darkness. Such a search may take some time. It'll take until Kingdom Hearts 1 to get them all. And here we finally get our first new Keyblade, Fairy Stars. A Keyblade that provides a balanced boost in strength and magic.
I mean, Terra's magic just sucks regardless of what Keyblade you have, so it's not great, but, I mean, you can use it, I suppose. And here, we actually unlock a bunch of new worlds that we can go to. So, as you can see, this first trio of worlds is kind of the princess trio. We've got the Sleeping Beauty world, the Snow White world, and then the Cinderella world. Now, we'll have to save those for another time, but we also get another world, this Mirage Arena. More on that later. We're not going to go there yet. We're probably not strong enough, and we can go back to the Land of Departure if we want. However, I think that's a good place to end the episode here. We covered a lot today. We cleared the first world. Like I said, the worlds in this game, really, really short. We got all of the treasures. We did not get all the stickers. We can't get all the stickers yet. Next time, we'll have to go to one of the new worlds, and we can experiment with the Maleficent Deal, I guess. So that should be interesting, huh? Look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.